energy or input of energy from out outside right now let us see about the pathway the seemingly simple process of converting pyruvate to phosphonyl pyruvate involves several steps some in the matrix of mitochondria and other in the cytoplasm we will next examine uh, all of these steps in more detail now you can see uh, uh, in the normal process of production of uh, pyruvate from phosphonyl pyruvate is a one step reaction process because this phosphonyl pyruvate is very very uh, energetic molecule so it just uh, very simply convert into pyruvate it can uh, release energy but for going reverse of this reaction it needs uh, many other enzyme complexes for doing this uh, we need two Im important enzymes one is the enzyme pyruvate carboxylase it will it, uh, act on pyruvate it can drag two carbon uh, carbon atoms from pyruvate and it will produce carbon dioxide and exclude carbon dioxide and thus it is generate it is generating oxaloacetate now oxaloacetate is again carried uh, through this uh, channel of mitochondrial membrane to the cytoplasm and then oxaloacetate is converted into phosphonyl pyruvate inside the cytoplasm with the help of the enzyme called phosphonyl pyruvate carboxykinase now PEP carboxykinase act on the oxaloacetate to generate PEP okay so this is a two step process okay now the very first step of the gluconeogenesis pathway involves the conversion of the 3 carbon pyruvate to the 4 carbon intermediate oxaloacetate. This energy required step is catalyzed by the pyruvate carboxylase an enzyme that requires biotin as the cofactor if you look at here. Okay. Anyways it will generate uh, this uh, carbon dioxide, it will produce this carbon dioxide anyways. Now, oxaloacetate cannot get out of the mitochondria directly, but first has to be converted to malate by the some cat malate dehydrogenase used in TCA cycle. Now, there lies the very very important step, because oxaloacetate uh, in this picture it is seen it is it, it was shown that oxaloacetate is con uh, is just taking out uh, out onto the cytoplasm, but this is not the case at all, because uh, inside the mitochondrial membrane there is no transporter for carrying oxaloacetate, so the oxaloacetate must be converted into some other intermediate that can be carry, uh, that can be uptaken to the cytosol and the in, uh, and, and this ingredient is mallet now mallet can be uh, can be transported to, uh, through this mitochondrial membrane via the mallet transporters then mallet will move on to the cytosol and then mallet will reconvert back into uh, oxalo uh, reconvert back into other uh, components and they'll be taken you'll see here okay now once in the cytoplasm the mallet is reconverted to oxaloacetate this time by the cytoplasm from the mallet dehydrogenase now it will convert into mallet now you can see here with the help of the mallet dehydrogenase the mallet is converted into oxaloacetate now then oxaloacetate can be uptaken right but uh, they don't need this oxaloacetate to reuptake on inside the cell because it will convert this oxaloacetate into phosphonyl pyruvate now the second unique enzyme of the gl gluconeogenesis phosphonyl pyruvate carboxykinase uh, catalyzes the conversion of the oxaloacetate to the phosphonyl pyruvate note this is another enzyme uh, energy requiring process in the very first step we need a one ATP molecule for accomplishing this step but in this and then it will produce oxaloacetate now I, I've uh, pronounce something I, I've told something uh, I've told something wrong about this step is that I've told carbon dioxide is generated that's not the case uh, but this pyruvate carboxylase is actually adding to carb uh, adding extra carbon to oxaloacetate that's the basic case but now this pyruvate uh, PEP carboxykinase is the enzyme which is just cleaving off out this carbon dioxide anyways now uh, the enzyme here is also uh, need needy or uh, needy for the GTP for and the energy of GTP hydrolysis for converting oxaloacetate into phosphonyl pyruvate. Okay, now uh, to review the conversion of the pyruvate to phosphonyl pyruvate, it requires energy input. In the very first step, it requires ATP, and second step, it requires GTP as the energy source. So two equivalent of ATP energy source are needed and carboxylation and decarboxylation steps are also there the very first step is the carboxylation step which I have uh, told wrong that I have told this is decarboxylation but the first step is the carboxylation step and the second step is the decarboxylation step okay now 
Gluconeogenesis proceeds by a simple reversal of the steps of glycolysis using the same enzymes up to the fructose 1,6 bisphosphate. Okay, so through this, uh, when it is generated phosphenyl pyruvate from pyruvate, the first step is very, very much tedious and energy consuming, but right after that, phosphenyl pyruvate is e easily converted into fructose 1,6 bisphosphate via the normal glycolysis enzymes, just the reversal of the pathways. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about all these steps. Okay. Now then, when it is uh, produ it is converted to fructose 1,6-base phosphate, at this point, reversal of the highly energetic phosphofructokinase step of glycolysis is avoided by a simple phosphate cleavage. Now this is the second energy barrier we have talked about. Uh, so we need to go against this energy barrier because the del G for the forward reaction is high, uh, highly, highly negative. So we need to go against this step, so we need to input some energy in that case. So how can we do this? Okay, now this can be done via the phosphate cleavage. Now we know we are having the phosphate 1,6-base phosphate. Now we, if we drag one phosphate group out of in this place with the help of phos uh, fructose 1,6-base phosphatase, so phosphatase enzyme remembers they cleave up phosphate group from other substrates. So again they are cleaving out this phosphate group for fructose 1,6-base phosphate. As a result, this phosphate cleavage gives us the energy uh, which are responsible uh, for dragging this reaction uh, towards this uh, fructose 6-base phosphate. Okay. Now fructose 6-phosphate is uh, then converted to fructose uh, uh, glucose 6-phosphate by the phosphoglucose isomerase. It is also a glycolysis enzyme working in reverse direction. Then all that remains is to remove the one phosphate group uh, to generate the glucose. So we have finally produced glucose 6-phosphate. Now what we need to do, we need to cleave up with this phosphate group and we need to generate glucose. If we cleave this phosphate group out, we can easily generate glucose. But this step is also uh, the forward step, that means this opposite direction, this from glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. This step is also uh, having the highly del G negative value. So we need to go against that. And how can we establish this? We can establish this by just cleaving out this phosphate with the help of the enzyme glucose 6-phosphatase in this case. So you, it will act on phosphate, uh, glucose 6-phosphate and drag this phosphate out. As a result, glu uh, glucose 6-phosphate will be converted into glucose. Okay. To overall process of gly gluconeogenesis is energy intensive. Now two pyruvate molecules are there, so what we need, we need 4 ATP, then 2 GTP, then 2 NADH, plus 6 H2O. Then finally we will generate one glucose molecule, 4 ADP molecule, 2 GDP molecule. These are the all hydrolyzed product of this ATP and GTP things. Now 6 phosphate, uh, inorganic phosphate molecules and 2 NAD. Now what we are doing, what is good about this process is that we are generating NADs, which are very, very important uh, because they are acting as electron carriers. Okay, and if we look at the uh, opposite process, that is uh, the process of glycolysis, we will uh, invest. Uh, we are investing two ADP and two inorganic phosphate, two NAD plus. We will produce two ATP, two NADH, and two two plus and two pyruvate. Now, this two pyruvate can further be converted into. Uh, for converting to carbon dioxide and water via the TCA cycle, it will generate uh, a further round of ATP and NADH molecules. Okay, so these are the net changes actually. These are the net changes. So net two ATP again, but in this case net two net four ADP and two GDP. So six uh, equivalent ATP net loss. Okay, so these are really really. Uh, this is the difference. So we are going towards the catabolic step. This is the catabolic one. This is the anabolic one. The anabolic step requires energy. The catabolic step produces energy. That is the basic part. We can actually uh, illustrate.